Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I've just been ballot cure canvassing. What's ballot cure canvassing, you might ask? <laughs> well, well, let me explain. In Georgia, they have something called voter suppression. And <laughs> turn right onto Crane Drive. Yeah. Turn left onto Short Street. Absentee. In a quarter mile, turn right on Grown out Continue because. on Georgia 20 East. So what is Ballot In a quarter mile. Canvassers. Continue We're on Sugarloaf Parkway for one and a half miles. So when someone's in one and a half miles, take the new hope. So when you vote absentee, one of the things you have to do is sign your ballot. One of the ways that your absentee ballot can be invalidated is if your signature on your ballot does not match the signature on file that you use to register to vote. It's frankly ridiculous that you can use a signature mismatch to throw out a ballot. A whole bunch of voters get their ballots thrown out. Continue on. I think for take the New Hope Road exit. Is that turn uh, right onto New Hope Road? Who are you? Certainly turn right onto Glenbrook. Definitely trying to keep right at the fork. In essence, never in half happen. a mile. Take the New Hope Road exit in the first place. Continue for half a mile. Turn left onto Glenbrook Cove. God, you're fucking annoying. Continue on New Hope here. Road for half a mile. Ballot curing is helping these voters who have already cast their vote via absentee ballot to cure some sort of issue, most often a signature mismatch, so that their vote may count. Because right now they've voted. In their mind, they're taken care of. But their ballot has been pulled and invalidated until they submit the appropriate documentation, which is usually an affidavit with their signature and a form of ID. So when someone's ballot is pulled, it is public record. So what the Georgia Democrats is doing is pulling this data and then sending these volunteers to go visit these voters at their homes with the appropriate documentation and cure the ballot on site. Whereas door knocking, you're only, first of all, getting a very small percentage of people to actually open the door, then you have to convince that person to go vote. Um, and maybe they were already gonna vote, maybe you're not even convincing somebody. In this case, someone has voted. They want to vote. They've tried to vote. In their mind, they're done. And if they don't realize that their ballot has been pulled, their vote, in essence, never happened. I have worked with several voters who do not have email addresses, who are over the age of 70 or 80, who are certainly not trying to vote in person right now. A lot of these voters are not aware that there's an issue with their ballot. And if they were aware, the instructions can honestly be a little confusing. It took me a while to understand the different scenarios and what was needed in each different case. And in order to cure your ballot, unless you want to go drive your affidavit and ID to your county board of registrars, you have to use an email address to submit it. So these voters who don't have an email would have to either reach out to a neighbor or a family member to actually get this sent in. And that's even assuming they know about the issue in the first place. So this method of voter suppression ha is particularly effective at targeting a few different types of the population. Black voters are disproportionately affected. Non-native English speakers are at a particular disadvantage because they may not even be aware that there's an issue, let alone be able to navigate the instructions of remedying it. Voters with disabilities who the reason for the signature mismatch is a disability that prevents them from signing their own name, they may not have a, a way to get to the polls mobility-wise. Also, as we're getting closer to election day, I'm visiting people who have taken the steps to cure their ballots, and for whatever reason, it's not processing in the system. That's why they're still on our lists. The options we give them are to keep on it, to keep checking their voter page every day to see if the status updates, or to go in person and vote. And the fact that someone has gone through the steps to request their absentee ballot, send it back in or drop it, drop it off, and then cure an issue with their ballot, and then they still have to go and vote in person, that is just, you failed your people when you require them to go through those steps just to vote in an election. That's disgraceful. But that is the point of it. It is not Actually, my last statement might not even be true. It's not even a failure. It is, it is built into the system. This is the entire point. They want to make it difficult for certain portions of the population to vote. And that is disgraceful. Thanks for tuning into this fucked up version of Carpool Karaoke with Morgan. Carpool? In 600 feet. I didn't
even see you there. I've just been ballot cure canvassing. This issue. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Hiram Davis Road. God damn it, you're pissing me off, Siri. Email address to turn here. left onto Bowman Road. I'm gonna fucking smash this phone. I know you're telling me where to go, which I appreciate, but you're being annoying about it. In a quarter mile. Was I supposed to? Yep, turn right. What am I supposed to? Oh, we are on a dirt, dirt road. Wrong gear. Where am I going? Or did you mess up the directions or did I mess up the directions? Let's be honest, probably me. My name's Morgan and it's been so fun riding with you. That was me peeling out. Bye.